to our Live at Five. We are a couple of minutes late because there are more of us and we can a bit of a, uh, just funny a space, Just funny space for everyone, aren't we? Um, so, this is our last Live at Five of the year because we're taking some time off over Christmas. We are indeed. Um, what are you doing for Christmas, Rob? Well, uh, I'm going to probably sit at home on the couch, uh, cool. drink myself into a stupor and... Uh, yeah, probably probably curse the world, things like that. Nice. James, what are you doing with it? Same as every year, see some family, have some drinks, have some food, have some cheese, etc. What's the cheese? What's the, what's the cheese of choice? I'm not sure this is my, my, see, my brother's in charge Christmas of cheese. Huh. Um, my brother's in charge of that, I'm in charge of the bills, so I don't get that. Is, it, is this a story? Did you get shafted out of the cheese? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just slowly come over every year. Yeah. So guys, as always, um, give us some comments. Tell us what you're drinking tonight. We are having, this is not our Christmas party. We'll do something next year. But we are having, <laughs> as always, the infamous Cosmos Christmas party that happens about June. First half of it. Yeah. How long have you been here? 10 years? Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. It's like one of those socials we have. This is one of those socials. Yeah. 100%. We've masked it in the calendar. As per contract. As per the contractor. Um, so we are going to be opening up some of our favourite or interesting things this year um, and having some drinks and chat about booze. Um, where should we start? Let's, let's, what's, what, what has everyone bought today? So I think, well, let, let's start off on, a, on, on the right foot and we'll have the Christmas sale, I guess. The Christmas sale? As in the Harvey's one? The Harvey's Christmas sale. So this is the Harvey's Christmas sale? What, what have we got here? I bought this. Yep. Barley wine. Barley so, wine is 7.5%. 7.5%, yeah, it's not much wrong, is it? It's not really big, does it? I bought my one is non alcoholic James, so you know. Cool, so someone else want to do that? Because, uh, let's say you don't drink. Oh, not yeah, wrong. Not wrong. James, what have you brought here? Just a... <laughs> anyway, it's a lump of aluminium. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, well, barley wine. Barley wine. Barley wine is what it says. James, what makes a barley wine a barley wine? Um, a very strong beer. Um, lightly hot, so I'd say malt forward. I might yeah, 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 so I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Malt Straight forward, not a lot of hops. <clears throat> usually quite dark, usually quite treacle. Yeah, a little bit sweet. Sweet, yeah. Harvey's, Cheers, yeah, one of my favourite breweries, old school brewery. And they're in um, Lewis. Lewis, so yeah. Home of the effigies. Oh, it's got a bit of uh, uh, marmite on the nose, hasn't it? Yeah, it's quite, um, quite yeasty. It is quite yeasty. So guys, if you want to get involved at home, tell us what you're drinking. We uh, we always like having conversations about what other people are drinking. Oh, oh nice though. Yes, yeah, good isn't that? No, no, like almost no opera on, right? I imagine with the phone it's trying to make body wine a bit more like approachable, so it's a little bit lighter. The body wine can be really like super Yeah, they can get up to like yeah. most of the body wines I've tried been about that sort of ten, eleven percent. Yeah, so yeah, ten bags and always no. Yeah. Mm. I, I quite like them. Like, in small doses, they're not something that I'm gonna sort of, you know take to a house party and, and rave, but... When was the last time you went to a house party, Will? If you say this year, we've got, we've got problems. <laughs> well, in January. Can't go to a house party in January. <laughs> just tell me house party in January. Everybody. I was away for December, so everyone so just held it off and pushed it back. Push it back. Uh, I think yeah. I might have been there as well. No. There's always next year. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. So. That's nice. It's nice, uh, nice to go to nice um, so What was I going to say? Yeah, I had my Christmas party last year, end of November, on a Sunday night. That was that was a savage decision. Did not make it in that Monday. I don't know if it off. But, um, <laughs> like, when did this happen? This is your Christmas party, as in just like, just general. Just Tom Gosnell's Christmas yeah. party. <laughs> oh no, the Gosnell's, did you not know yeah, the Gosnell's? Like, this is why we were just not invited. Sugar. It's the other team that I invited. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Alright. Cool. So we got that out of the way. Got that out of the way. Then, <laughs> should we, should we, brilliant. Should brilliant. we go through what everyone's bought? Bit of show yeah, and tell. Go through what everyone's bought. Bit of show and tell. Cool. So I brought uh, Sri Lanka uh, double block smoked beer. So this this brewery are really well known for doing smoked beers. Uh, so I thought, you know, smoky Christmas winter. Perfect. Eight yeah. percent. It's eight. Yeah, I guess it's double, double, double block, isn't it? So it's quite strong. Um, what does yeah. block, block mean? Dark. Oh, All right. Yeah. The double strength rather than double dark. Yeah, double, yeah. yeah. No, no, sorry. It was double strength dark there. Yes, nice. Um, and then I, I, I dragged in two. Uh, all right, just to show us all that. Well, it's like that, or if you know, somebody brings in a non-alcoholic beer and we all uh, suffer. Yeah, I think it's just topical. Um, 
<laughs> so I brought in the uh, uh, the Colonel Saison Damson. So uh, uh, nice, yeah. just because we were just doing our uh, slow and juniper. Yeah. Um, and I was telling the guys that it's really quite reminiscent like slows when, you, when we were boiling uh, the actual slows off. Like it smelled like damsons, it smelled like the the kernel damsons. Yeah. So kind of, yeah. But it's, um, the third installment of our small batch program. Second. Second installment. Second installment. Sorry, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it just reminded me of the kernels, like that sort of, that, that, that fruity sort of, uh, just reminded me of that beer. So I was like, I'm going to oh. drink that. And the guys were like, oh, I haven't tried it before. And I was like, Hector's not here, of course. Um, there are set smells and like flavours and aromas are very Christmassy, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's one of them. And then the other one I grabbed was a slow and juniper sour from our friends at Ant Fashion Hot Nice. So again, reminiscent of Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I kind of want to see yeah. what other people do with it. So it's kind of nice just to grab onto that and go, okay, we, we've created what we, we wanted to create and we got exactly what we wanted to out of it. It's kind of nice to see what other people do with a similar sort of uh, flavour profile and, and how they interpret that and put it out. So, And then I I thought non-alcoholic there, because I thought the brief was, what is the thing you most enjoyed or thought about most this year? So for me, the range of non out beers that's out there has got, gone from zero to 100, I guess, this year. And I've been trying to pull through, and there's loads of different, I think, there's different styles and everything. But the ones that are most successful are the simpler ones that are just trying to make it, um, make the beer. That they yeah. Beer. And so this is the Brooklyn Lager, uh, hop, what's it called? It's just called the Hoppy Lager. Anyway, um, it just does this as it's in. Um, so should we start there? Because, yeah. Yeah, let's start again. Um, yeah, so I've been drinking a lot of non beer this year, in an attempt during lockdown to not to be sh- uh, drunk every night. Um, so it, for me, I was always a bit cynical, and I know you two are looking at me with dripping cynicism in the eyes, but um, yeah, it's time. always something that, yeah. I, it's a category that I've never really looked at before, but actually... I quite liked it when the, uh, the cause there's quite a lot, of, pretty much every German brewery yeah, is an alcohol-free. Yeah. Um, and they're generally the best. Like yeah, the sh- and then like the Schneiderweiss, yeah, the Schneiderweiss one. even the Erdinger alcohol free is okay. Yeah. You know, that's quite quite big and quite um, you know, a bit everywhere. Um, and they were always quite good. And then when the the non alp sort of thing come into into a little bit more into craft breweries, it was you know people didn't have that. That's it wasn't it was never part of their range. Yeah. You know, that there in Germany is part of their core range. They really respect it. And this was you know with the non alp sort of moving into dry January and these sorts of things, people were just kind of making them and they didn't really taste reminiscent of the brewery, they're all brewing in the same sort no. of style. And I think there is there are some styles that lend themselves. So I had a non out port that the other night did not really last. I, I quite liked not that it's not non out, but there's the, the porter that was done by the guys at Small Beer. Oh, uh, like yeah, yeah. Small beer doesn't amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's either one point two or two point five, so it is two. Somewhere yeah. somewhere oh, that, that, that way BB exactly anyway. Low. And I had that and I went yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool because it's most of the time you get like a let's say a four or five percent porter, which you know is usually the porter strength you want to go. Um, it tastes quite similar, you know. Yeah. Like in, I quite like their their idea and their concept of you know not putting enough alcohol to get pits in their beers, and you know it's you know that's what they yeah. do and they take care of it. And you can really notice. Um, so yeah, on the nose, you get the other quite thing hoppy. is like it just says hoppy lager, but this is quite a dark caramel, yeah. it's more like a malt forward sort of. European no, style. No, I mean, this. Yeah, I've got the semi. Oh, God. Hoppy. Yeah, it's definitely a topic. Hoppy and malty in the body. A little bit burnt. Is that the same? Yeah, it's not getting that job. A bit caramel. But for Mark me, this candy. is like. It, it tastes like a beer, right? It, it, it fulfills that. But I quite fancy a beer after a, a run. If I had any old occasion, I'd smell it. A little bit thin on the body. It's always going to be. So right. yeah, so I think that's the thing, isn't it? People figure out a way to make up the body. Yeah. And, um, with my alcoholic stuff, and that you can't do that. With, you can't do that with alcohol. It's my alcoholic. It's usually not to do by sugar. Yeah, there's a few ways of doing it, right? So one one is the uh, the boil off method. The other is uh, using a an alternative. Uh, the Saccharomyces for fermentation. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another like reverse osmosis. Not reverse osmosis is another kind of really big bit of German care. That's what the yeah, German yeah. ones are really good. It's they brew a normal beer and they strip the alcohol out. Yeah, and um, they boil off, which yeah. can cause a whole lot of things to change as well. Um, is it a filtration system? They're only allowed the ethanol and, and. I want to say it is. 
I did do. I did look at it. Yeah, looked into the other day. And um, yeah, but that's that's quite a big jump, right? So most of the uh, most of the small guys were doing that oil on. So you know, coming into these one one point five percent low ABV beers with these uh, alternative yeasts seems to be do we offer to do like the free distillation method as well? So bring now for no. not really. Cause you're taking the water away, right? So with free distillation, you're kind of concentrating up there and removing the water. Mm, okay. So you kind of yeah, you end up with just water. Uh, yeah. Um, so, what do you think of that? All right, it's all right. It's really, it's really so, like, I, was, I, was, I was expecting it to be uh, a lot lighter, kind of yeah. like. Um, I think they did a good job of getting yeah. it. The main thing is got, it's got all the aromas of like. Yeah. Of, of mold. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's the a whole character is awesome. Yeah, no, I, I think as a non go, that is pretty good. There's one in Ghost Ship, I want to Ghost Ship. So they've got um, Ghost Ship, the alcoholic version, they've got the non alcoholic version. I think they run that through some sort of filter up, asking about the filtration systems. It's the same beer, and they just spit it. I quite liked um, that Wild and Free, the Wild Beer Dude. Oh, the. Um, kind of like a lacto. What was it? The, it was a yeah, lacto ferment soft drink. Oh, yeah, Wild well, Ferment. It wasn't quite, it was like a malt. Like a, it was like a wild fermented uh, malt beverage, right? It was, it was, it was malty. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it had the body of a, of a beer as well, which was kind of cool to be able to sort of use a bit more mixed fermentation just to create a bit more of that uh, fermental fermented character, fermentation character. Yeah. Right. Where are we going next? Uh, let's. Have, I, want, I want to just get into that uh, beer design. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, well, I found the Jack Daniels bottle open before. You know, you're living large when uh, you've got a Jack Daniels. Uh, that was for some crazy flavor. event I went to, sponsored by Jack Daniels and Mr. Lion. Mr. Lion? Or. What do I know? One on Hoxton Street, closed now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I think it was probably one. Sorry. <laughs> you know, one of these like, food events where the. Watch, but the brand ambassador just piling twos and stuff, and it's just, it's all, I mean, great, it's great. Yeah. But it was one of those heavy nights. Fill, fill in your own suffix? Yeah. That kind of amazing. Oh, oh, God, it's so. I just love it, like, they, they do it every year. Um, that kind of amazing. Like, you gotta, like, when I first moved to London, uh, kind of was silly on breweries, uh, this was what, back in 2013. And they were making incredible beers then, and they just haven't stopped. They haven't wavered. They've just always made great, great drinks. Yeah, it's interesting. They come in and out of fashion. Yeah, in terms of mm. sexiness and coolness, but their product never really. Yeah, I mean, no, it obviously, it actually evolves. Yeah, and then, like their, their mixed fermentation program has just gone on to a whole another, mm. uh, whole another realm. But um, even like their their bottles and and their labeling hasn't changed, and it's still current. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, like that, that video they made on, um, on YouTube, basically when we first opened, and it's just, um, you know, the process and it's just a completely wordless. It's, uh, just watching, watching the founder go through the process. And, Sick. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So that balance of like. On the nose, though, like, that's what I mean. Berries like, and, yeah, berries yeah. and juniper is amazing. And that's kind of quite, I was saying, like, it just reminds me of that. Like, you put your nose into like our slow, <laughs> and you just like hit with this just aggressively uh, fruity. Um, no, like I have no idea how much they use, but I just got an image in my head of them absolutely bombing mm -hmm. with them. Just yeah, yeah, more than than, than, than than volume. Yeah. Oh, yeah. artist yeah. levels. Yeah. And that style of that, that saving style really lends itself to fruity. So. Yeah, and it, like it's just because it's so sweet and fruity on the nose, and then that 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 really acidic um, palate is. I just love it. It's delicious. Even so during the winter, you know, like we need to discuss this with some chat. What has been your highlight of the year, Will? My highlight of the year, and then we'll come to you after this, James. So you've got two minutes to think about the answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go put me on the spot. My highlight of the year. Um, so my highlight of the year. How cool! I'll do. I just feel the space. Is it me? Uh, no, the highlight of your year. It's not just you. <laughs> it's the whole Gosnell's family. <laughs> How we just knit together. We'll start buying us the Christmas one. I, I do <laughs> like, um, we, did, we did watch how the knit socks together. You have to wear shoes though, James. You can put this as well, James. Shoes? I can't yeah. wear socks and sandals. Can't wear socks and sandals. When did that not get, when, when, when did that not become uncool? I know, I know. 
Um, but no, I, I, I think it's fair to say this year's been uh, interesting, right? And it's been challenging, but I think it's been cool that we've all kicked in and, you know, worked pretty hard. And we've moved things on, like, I think, from last year, like, uh, we've continued to grow, uh, which is cool, right? Yeah, I think too shocked about that. Like, you know, it's not been an easy year, but I think we, I think particularly the online stuff and, like, reaching people with more of the pacing. So yeah, well, it's done everything really well. Yeah. In terms of working things, yeah, it's had a really tough time. Um, so yeah, it's been great. I think we still still functioning. Yeah, still do some different ones. Yeah. So what was the, the highlight of this development team? Yeah, that was it. So uh, you, you want to take that off your little list? Then? What things it's, that needs to be said? No, no. no, no. <laughs> that was your Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> it was a That's the, the best back. thing you've ever given me. Pat on the back. Um, best thing for me. Uh, Enough to be work late. We can we can broaden that out if that needs it. That makes it awkward. All right. <laughs> Uh, my weekend, um, <laughs> no, God, highlight of the year, getting the small batch program away was probably, oh, yeah, probably one of those ones, right? Like, that, that kind of shows... Which you can sign up to now on our website, if you like. No, no, you interrupt me, it's fine. It's Sorry. a very emotional point there, Tom. <laughs> um, I really opened up, this is uh, quite dangerous here. Okay, I think we'll explain it there, um, Yeah, probably getting the small batch away, right? So that's, that's kind of... You know, getting people to trust in, in what we do and, and, and that's, you know, was a real showcase of, of you know, our ability to, to make things and to get people to trust us and, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, that was kind of, that was great being able to, you know, put things on video as well and express ourselves and do these sorts of things. And yeah, I think that shows that's, us a real, something I've, yeah, as a real team or like people behind the brand and I think that's something that I realised. For a long, for a long time, like, I think in 2019 we were trying to have like a massive brand, and like that was naturally we're not. Right? We're we're like, like six figure dudes in tech and making me and like leaning into that a bit more. Not I don't think we product. really had the choice last year, right? We, we were so busy last yeah. year that, that, that we had to have that mentality. We had to have that way of looking at things because we had to structure so much. And to be fair, I forget how busy we were production wise last year. It was yeah. insane towards the end. Like yeah. all those containers going to Korea every month. And then the US, and and the US, US yeah. and and just even going to Singapore and, and just just keeping up with with that with the, the small kit that we had yeah. is um, no we, we that last year was when we was that when we doubled our kit by then was that last year the year yeah before? Well, no, it was yeah, last year it was last year and, and the first then as soon as you started doing all the pre order and that first run was that full full group kit was when you went away and we were yeah, just on it. On what, it. the end of the year? Yeah. I went away in December. Yeah, and you left James to do like three groups? No, no you, you built me, you, you built it. We you also run, it. run it in. So the guys at home, I didn't just build something and then go, all right, guys, cool, I'm just going to go away on holiday. Um, <laughs> just sort that out, make sure it's done by the time I get back. I left it for like no, no, that's, two and a half weeks worth of production. <laughs> the year before, I did that. Um, with the pasteurizer, I remember being in Bali. Can you not find someone to just plumb in this pasteurizer? <laughs> oh, yeah, God, that was horrible. That was horrible. Nobody yeah. wanted to do it. Nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah. So, and yeah, we had this new back kit, which is like a gas fired pasteurizer. Not very complicated. No, to get. It, like, it, it's just finding that, like, now I know exactly who to talk to, but yeah. at that stage, trying to find somebody and explain to them what a inline pasteurizer was. Um, just nobody wants to touch it. No. And it's like, oh no, we, we don't do that. And you're like, you do. It's, it's just boilers. a giant boiler. It's a commercial boiler. Like, that's, that's technically what it is. Cool, nobody else cares about that. Right, you never know. <laughs> James, let's keep it going. All right, yeah. Probably between, between the lockdowns when it was kind of that sweet spot of like end of summer. Yeah. We had towards uh, sort of back in, back in the summer. It's been able to be outside and having all those. Um, you know, you can still go outside, but. You know what I mean, no. Big groups, all that. I'd go, managed to have a, my only holiday was like playing a gig like four hours in, in Bournemouth and then driving, in, and then driving back. Um, but yeah, so that, that side of it. And then also just have, having more time to sort of do things at home and using my free time a bit better, a bit of creative with music and stuff. And then on the work side, also just seeing all these projects and ideas we've had for ages just come to fruition. Yeah, it's been nice to have more time to yeah. 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 go over that. Mm. Where are we going next in the beers then? Sorry, that's enough of the emotional chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, yeah, we lost half of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're down to, gosh, we're dipping yeah, like 10,000 yeah, beers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> James, take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. 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 Than
Um, from Plastic. <laughs> right, where are we going next? Uh, yeah. Amstrak or the, the. Do we need the double box for the last? Yeah, I think so it's each one's fun. I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. What's that? everyone's uh, Christmas film? Christmas film? Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine is The Holiday. The Holiday? Yeah. Um, a I Holiday? I don't know. Jack Black and. Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz. The one Diaz where he's dating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where they swap houses between LA and the Cotswolds and they all fall in love. <laughs> Horrible. Oh, mate. I wish it was a night. Brilliant. I love it. I, I am a shitty I'm, romantic comedy. I'm starting to warm up to Jack Black. Oh, I love Jack Black. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. He's played quite a serious role in this one. He's not. Well, that's what I like. He's been a comedic character play really. It's like anything Jim Carrey does when he's serious. It's he quite seems terrifying. Like, what's that Adam Sandler yeah. film with the uh, Uncut Gems? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've watched it, yeah. Oh, I've watched it. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. So, uh, have you seen One Hour Photo with Robin Williams? He's like a serial oh, yeah. That's Ooh. terrifying. Ooh, yeah. Like he's, yeah. <laughs> Especially like growing up with him with all these comedy movies and stuff. Patch Adam. That's like I was talking to you the other day with Wolf Creek. Yeah. An Australian yeah. horror film. But the guy who plays the murderer in Australia, we have this like. like it? Yeah. So like in Australia, we have this uh, like between the ages of one and four, usually is a, a show called Play School. And it's just like talking about shapes and, yeah, and, and things, well. and like he's the like he was like one of the guys on that that like we all grew up with. And then you go watch this movie and he's cackle laugh and and like just just it, it was yeah, yeah. right um, messing me. So we are on the Juniper, Juniper. Slow Juniper saison. No, no it's, a, it's just a slow it's out. No, it's like Send in your favourite Christmas films as well. Yeah, do let us know. Um, oh yeah, so what was my favourite Christmas film? Uh, Home Alone. Like I, I had that on VHS when I was a kid. VHS. Yeah, I recorded it off the TV. Um, my favourite. I used to watch it. Mum even trying to give me like a thing. That like DVD stuff. Yeah, it's you, um, it's about this. You know what? It's like computers. It's like it's frozen for shit. Oh, so like TV, TV books. Yeah, yeah, TV yeah, books. Yeah. Best way to sum it up. <laughs> um, but the best thing about it is, like, I had it for so long, and like, my mum bought me a DVD of it, and it's not the same thing. But on the VHS was the ads from the nineties when I was a kid. Oh, amazing! Yeah. yeah. So you could sit there and just watch the same ads through the, through the movie, and uh, there you go. Yeah. One of the days, sort of the five minute like ads from the same like. I can still see them like production companies doing all like giving them their mark. Yeah, we're right. always so bad, like slightly sexist, um, overtly well like, children. <laughs> a story. <laughs> There was just one like Lays, which is just like some dude in a like a like a alien sort of like furry alien suit, just like eating crisps. Just like I don't even know what that means. All right, so what is this? Yeah, yeah, what is this? And what what are Hands we? Hands catching up days. Slowly it's a slow and juniper sour. So I got these beautiful packs. That's uncommon. That amazing. is amazing. Yeah. Well done, guys. Whoever did that, that is except like that's really cool. Nice the colorings. Yeah. Quite like fancy Christmas, right? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, getting a bit of the slows, a bit of the June. Mm-hmm. Oh, the rest of the June for now was mm. effective, but yeah. After the. Um, I've seen three and a half. Yeah, it's just like. like um, after the beer stays on. Uh, kind of. It's hard to, because it's the same flavour, isn't that? Very yeah, fast. but like the, the acid level is so it's much less. Yeah. It's a lot more malt character. Mm. It kind of tastes like they're, they've done it with like a, like a lager yeast. <laughs> Yeah, it's a quite Oh, no, it's a, like an owl yeast. Like a, like a, almost like a low-populating owl yeast. Mm. Yeah, you're right, it's not so much juniper. Yeah. Um, oh, Christmas, like Christmas, Christmas song? Oh. What would you want to make some music? Christmas Carol. Oh, that's, that's a classic. Damn. That is, yeah, you're right. I was looking for that on Netflix, it was there. it's not that. I'm about to buy it. On VHS. On VHS, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Just look at, look at the VHS. <laughs> just hold it up to the light and just stream it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On a projector. Uh, uh, no, that's good. And that and Muppet Treasure Island. Oh, I always need to watch so that. Good, yeah. 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 yeah, I never really did the Muppets when I was younger. Bear in mind, my sister's like 34, my brother's like 31, and my brother said, and every Christmas, you just sit down, on Christmas Eve, you just sit down and watch that. I tell you what, 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 what's my dad, you met my dad, he, Watching, but it's uh, I see. he okay. is obsessed with crap films at Christmas, like romantic comedies, any lifetime movie, you know, like this afternoon movie. Oh man, they're great. I, 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 if this is the only thing, like, I stopped watching TV quite young when I was like 15 or something, I was like, I don't want to watch commercial TV anymore. The only thing that I miss 
is catching the greatest midday movie. Yeah. Like that yeah. nobody's ever gonna see like the actual like like American TV like cowboys that made for just playing in the middle of the day. Like it, they're great. Like the intro, the first fifteen minutes is always really engaging. Then nothing, one fight scene, and then a romantic ending. Yeah. It's just like it's just so structured. It's great. One thing I don't get is people who I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like yeah. things like Die Hard. Like to me, that's not a Christmas film. I mean, I watch it. It's set at Christmas. It's set at Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. Yeah. But I think like, you're going to upset a lot of people, James. <laughs> yeah. I forgot it was set at Christmas. I've only watched it once through Christmas. And it yeah, it's 100% a Christmas movie. Um, yeah. so it's just me, Bob. <laughs> Have you seen Paddington? The new one. The new one. No. I mean, that is great. You would enjoy With it. Martin. Uh, Penny Martin, I think. Steve Martin? No. Martin Scorsese. Uh, Martin Lawrence? Martin Scorsese doing Paddington. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I would love to see that. I can't remember who's in it, but it, that's, that's definitely worth a watch. It's basically a cameo of every British actor who's around at the time. Yeah. 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 Battle yeah. Uh, I'll be watching that. Favourite uh, Christmas album slash Christmas song? Uh, yeah, Boo Blade, when he got song. <laughs> what are you saying? What's wrong with Boo Blade? No, I just assumed that I was going to say. I wonder whether this is the content that people were expecting on a new podcast. Who knows? It's loose, it's Christmas, we don't mind. Yeah. Last one. Yeah. Um, my favorite Christmas album. I've got we've got like a playlist of like forty to fifty classics. That but I couldn't say that I have a specific Christmas album, but yeah. It's like that that era of Christmas is some of my favourite for sure. And the eighties obviously. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow, well, I just love wearing the makeup when I sing it. I like it too. Yeah. Yeah. You must have got a musical playlist. No, I just have one album. Me and my sister listen to whenever we cook Christmas lunch together, which is um, James Brown's Funky Christmas. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which is because uh, James Brown died on Christmas Day. Yeah. So that's our little uh, James Brown day. You sit down with that on a Is that what you said? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, I think we should try some of our small batch. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so we tasted everyone else's tuna first, so let's uh, down to the north. Let's see what we've done. This is a lot of fun brewing this. Yeah, this was, this was really good. So what's going on? So, no, it's, um, it's, both of it's, 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 God, where to start? So we did it with two different uh, yeast strains, uh, both to about 10, 10.5%. Uh, both so that's not house season and stepping up again. No, no, straight, um, the straight wine, uh, both red wine yeast. Okay, together um, at the same time. So, as in, sorry, as in you blended the yeast. Or no, no, so we did two separate, two separate barrels. So the hundred liter ex bourbon barrels. Um, so we fermented in those on top of dried um, slow berries and dried juniper. Um, we had a primary ferment there. Um, and then we uh, blended those back together, and then we did a hot steep with slow star anise, just to bump up the spice a little bit, um, and then back sweeten a little bit, back give it a bit, a little bit more, more sugar, and and then uh, then yeah, we ended up with this. It smells beautiful. Oh, it smells pink, pink color. Yeah, and it's, it's it's really got that sort of because it, it is ten it percent, but it's got a slight sort of gin alcohol kick. Nice. Yeah, and a little bit, I mean, ferment it in the bourbon barrels as well, just to pick up a little bit of those high alcohol notes as well, and also just a little bit of oxidisation. And it's got a little bit of that sort of sticky sweet. That's um, nice. Flavor. Not as sweet as slow gin. No, no, no yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's that. yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, one of the yeasts we use, uh, CY, semi invested if you want to know. Um, it was really cool. We never really used that uh, that yeast for, for anything we put out before. Yeah, and the acid is actually sort of yeah. incredible. Yeah. Just it, it, it's it's like it's meant for a semi sweet um, style wine, and it's just really capturing that sort of fruit character. So mm -hmm. you know, kind of want to use red wine yeast over white wine yeast, like we do with some of the other things that we do, um, just to sort of capture the, the that that berry quality yeah. as you do in red wine. Um, so yeah, and then yeah, carbonate it, ten percent, put it in cans, and and smash it during Christmas. Yeah, it's gonna be cool, really cool. Uh, 
plans. So let's go out next week. Early next week? Uh, mid next week. Mid next week. Stay tuned. But yeah. Small batch project people or something. Yeah, cool. All right. And that's the other thing. Fermented in barrels, get a little bit of that barrel character. A little bit of the tannin. But didn't realise how tannic those oh, fresh slow berries were. You get, I got one before I left to go to some deliveries. Not like it, I was with mum. It just completely You think it's going to be like nice and sweet and, and you know, like, like you associate with everybody does with, with slows. But you get these fresh slows and they're just, just coming. Like they're neutral, they're a little bit sweet, a little bit acid. And then all you're left with is just this furry tannin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like when he, when we were making up, uh, you know, sort of steeping and, and, and boiling these slows up, the smell that come off it was really quite farmhousey as well. There's a little bit in that there as well. There's a little, little bit of funk underneath it, and yeah, yeah really complex. Right. I was really happy with it. That yeah, that just sort of that threw me. I wasn't ready for that. I'm ready for it. I've never had a smoked beer, smoked beer before. Well, I have. I've never had a I'm just going to have a smoke in there. Um, do they light candles in the bottle and then fill it? Yeah, yeah each one. That's right. Yeah. No, no, tell me, James. Sorry. Uh, so they use them to smoke them off, of course, and it gives it this amazing smoke flavour. And it, do you smoke more than stout, or is it just that? No, you can do, you can do. if you want to smoke some, stout. Some, I remember going on the Guinness factory and there was some thing about how they burnt them more for. Well, they just raise the balls after that, though. Yeah, once you, it's just like coffee, right? Once you get past a certain point, it just starts to get smoky. No, no, they, they, they dry out, to do with the way they mold the body, so they, they dry it out using, um, like, instead of, know, instead of drying them out in the kiln, they dry it out using smoke from um, a hay or whatever. Uh, okay. So just to run me through how they make So you take, take malt. So, so you take fresh barley, fresh barley, and then you malt it. Yeah, yeah so you germinate, you germinate. Or germinate it. Trick, trick into germination by getting to a certain moisture level, uh, so that it starts growing, basically. Yeah. And then you kill off the germination process using heat to a certain point, and that's like you say when you get pale malts, that's just X amount of time of temperature. When you get darker malts, which you find in porters and stouts, that's obviously more time of temperature. But this is a smoke. This is a different process where you yeah. use that they're smoking the malt to dry it out rather than just using just heat. ambient yeah. heat. Yeah, because that's that's how you do uh, uh, whiskey, right? So that's where we could get the peak because you would put feed in as yeah, well, so fire yeah, sauce right. and the malt, and it would smoke its way through. So, so if you're running a brewery, you get the malt in at that point, so it's, it's already malted and dried. Is that the right? Is that what I'm saying? If you get into a brewery, yeah. So like yeah, yeah. when you hear that, yeah, that's what you get in right yeah, 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 yeah. It's all done by the monsters. If you're you know, if you're a big brewery, you can run it. You've probably got a little malt house on the side. Right? Yeah. I wonder, is there any, are there any, are there any, are there any craft breweries in the UK making, harvesting their own malt, there, malt there, their own? There is, maybe not harvesting their own barley, but there definitely are couples that have their own malt house on the inside. There'll be people like, um, um, Shepherd's Mean, all that oh, so bigger, like, bigger guys. Older, usually yeah. older breweries yeah. as well, yeah. Because you would have to, right? Mm-hmm. You'd yeah. be yeah. buying, well, Shepherd's Mean, I mean, old brewery in the UK, so, yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if there's anything, do you do it on a craft scale, where you just... Yeah, like people like, like I'm part of a you know, group that is you know, malters and people do it in their own house in their own setup. Basically, not this one. The nose on it though is like oh, it's bacon, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's like bacon-y, sweet, salty, and oh, it's like taste. It smells like frazzles. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in the best possible way. Yeah. It's really elu- like it's uh, oh, like it, it smells sticky sweet. It smells. One of the brewers from smells the, yeah, one of the bacon. Brewers, brewers being like, yes, he gets it. Yes. <laughs> it's got, it tastes like frazzles too. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, when, I bought, when I was making bean soup, it smells like a smoked ham hock. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry frazzles. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible, James. Well done. You've definitely won. There's a really good... Uh, so, me <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's <laughs> the only thing we know. The only thing we know is you definitely lost. <laughs> Guys, I'm a responsible drinker. And they... So there's a really amazing uh, little pub in Greenwich called Union, which I think I think maybe linked to Mean Time. Oh uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's other uh, other pubs that have this on tap, but this is this on tap. Yeah, but, and they have different selections of them as well. And <laughs> in, like, in the winter time, having, having a pint of this 
But it's not how that one's quite strong. But so that, what is it? What, what is the name of this? Because my German and my reading not the good. Ashlinka. Ashlinka. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. Back down, are you? Yeah, right down. <laughs> but um, well, one of their main products is like a four point four version of it, so it's quite smashable and fine. Uh, nice dark beer on Wednesday. And like, yeah. And then low ceiling pubs. The thing is, you're thinking it's going to be like this thick body and and. Yeah, it's going to be mold forward. It's, it's really it's not. It's really almost, clean. it's almost large, not largery, but it's almost like a, like an ESB or something like that. Where it's kind That's of, what always surprises me. About I don't even know ESB, like it's just like a dark large. It's got a bit of body, but it's not like it's not like, thick. It's like a dunkel. Like you yeah, yeah. a dunkel, and you're like, yeah. I, you expect it to be really thick and stouty because that's what it's not. It's still, you know, that kind of large bit. Um, how do we smoke the honey, guys? So I've I've seen it a couple of different ways. So uh, just from making smoked gin, so uh, kind of think of it like you would uh, like a like a like a bong premise. So you've got like a what's a bong? It's a it's a uh, tobacco smoking tea. Okay, cool. Um, like a, a so shisha pipe. Yeah, yeah. So you have um, your burning medium going through your liquid. Yeah, and then you're pulling the vacuum from the top. Yeah. So that's what you do with smoked gin is you would have like chicory or applewood or something and you would, you would burn it on the side and you would pull it through the liquid. Through the cell or just through the liquid? Through the liquid. You would have a set. I wouldn't, yeah, so no. I wouldn't run it through the <laughs> I'm just like, jeez, no, this no. sounds like... But yeah, that, that's kind of the, like a, one of the good methods of doing it. Um, you can also soak things in there as well to be able to extract it. But that's quite an easy process. If you're going to do it for honey, I'd probably do it that way. Yeah, well, so you make up a honey and water yeah. mix and then smoke it through. So I tried it, I tried smoking water. I meant to that uh, on a smoker, like on a dark smoker on a small scale. It didn't really work. How, yeah, how do you approach that? What do you mean? Uh, you just threw water into a smoker? No, you're just having like a, a really thin, uh, so really. Okay, like, and having like the top open and. The top it. open and then. You're putting the smoke through it. Actually, no, that's not what it was. It was ice. So it was a big block of ice. Oh, we actually, you've told me about this. And then yeah. you're trying to melt the ice using the smoke and then condensing it below um, on yeah. my balcony in Beverly. <laughs> it didn't, didn't go. I wonder why your neighbours didn't like that. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Uh, I just didn't see the genius that I was trying to bring to you. What are you doing? I'm smoking ice. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Also, a joke in Australia because the ice means methamphetamine. Oh, right, yeah, it does say it as well, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, you, I mean, you, you, judge, you single handedly gentrify Australia, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I should have should have bought a house first. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing that I really regret. <laughs> I just didn't think it was worth it. Um, uh, this is amazing. It is. And I think, yeah, I think the conclusion of all their beers, most of their beers are smoked as well by their specialty. Yeah, I guess once you've sort of. Got that in your process, that's the way you do it. Because once you've had that, there's no point in drinking anything else. <laughs> no, you can't taste anything else. <laughs> I feel like I've smoked like 40 times. <laughs> yeah. so, that's really good. So I think you should smoke smoke me. Yeah, 100%. The other way to do it is obviously harvest our own honey, smoke out the baby. No. No, that take a lot of work. Sorry, no, is anybody at home that's like, oh, I want to do what James does? <laughs> yeah. Don't. So, um, what do you mean smoke out the bees? That's how you chase bees out of a hive, then you use smoke. No, you use smoke you to calm them down. Yeah. That's, that's what I mean, yeah. And then that smoke will get into the honey. They can still seal up wax. Yeah, but you have to get some different grass honey out of the thing. Right? No, you pull it out. Do you, you pull it out. I, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. This is totally a joke. I've never smoked a hive from yeah, so. of course. But, clearly. What? but you've been. I don't, don't understand. Okay, so when you take honey out of hive, it's on the frames. And they basically yeah. made the cells and they closed them up with wax. So all, each cell is like sealed. Yeah, no, no, and they spin it out and the whole time out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm talking about like the old school thing when they used to just put their hands in the eye. Yeah, but they're cracking through all the, the all the wax. All the wax. So, so, like, so they're, not, they're not like, they're not going in there where you can't see that there's so much smoke that you can't see the bees. Yeah. Like you, you're talking, do we have to smoke honey? You'd have to do quite Sorry, well. I was a joke, obviously. Yeah, no, I know. Just whether I take things very seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not. So you're this not is not the time to piss around, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rupert's suggesting Beaufort 57% gin, which borrows some Heston Blumenthal technology. There we go. We'll have to have a look. I think it's a smoke mead. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's lots of different what's, methods. What's the name of smoke mead, Well. 
Can we make it? Uh, we, I need to find, smoke meat. We need to find. <laughs> we need to find a type of meat that hasn't been made that we can make up a silly name for. Well, to be honest, I've never I've never come across a smoke yeah. salmon. Yeah. Well, what would what would we call it? Uh, Best name to put forward. We've all got eight seconds. Um, two, one. Um, carbonamel. I like that you put the mel on the end. Yeah, that's good. Too. Carbonamel. Um, carbon carbonamel. Uh, All right. So, guys, answers on a postcard for what we're going to call the style of meat, which is a smoked meat. Um, oh, we've been saying that for the gin, they smoke the water with hickory and oak. Yeah, so a bit like we. Were yeah, there. and then, like I, like I said, I know a couple of um, distilleries that do it that way for, for smoking their um, the gin. I think they do it with vodka as well. Yeah. But um, the other, like the other thing is, you could do it uh, in barrels as well. So if you if you had a fresh fresh char, yeah, okay, then you get a nice char. little uh, like, but it depends how you char it as well. So in that that barrel making process, lots of different ways of sort of. When are you building the barrel from the oak on your farm? Well, well I planted the oak tree year yesterday, so what have we got 35, 40 years. I put in the cool. Yeah. Um, no, so my the the trees there are what, what we got five years, and then probably two to three years after the See tree that. gets cut down. Yeah, yeah, let it let it sort of run out, and then I was just watching videos on this how to how to do it in a in a small thing. But I'm gonna have to like do pickets and slowly bend it as I go and wet it. And do you steam them? Yeah, I do that as an industrial steam and build you know, a barrel a week. Wet, wetting them is just as good. You just got to hold yeah, them. Yeah, fair. Enough. Yeah, no, it's just, I mean, we'll do it during the summer too. Yeah, well, that's a YouTube series, I watch. Oh, mate, yeah, hundred percent. It's a YouTube series I have watched. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, smoke me names. Um, I really want to get it. Uh, Razzle I'm trying to think of something like uh, Charmel. Charmel. That sounds like Carmel. It's Carmel. Like that. No, no, it's, no, it's caramel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm thinking something like. Um, I think that'd be something really cool to play with, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm going to play with that. How are we with the safety amount? What's the safety? Go for that, because... Uh, oh, no. No, we'll have to go with... Um, from the end amount? From the ETH amount? Who was the first wow. genus to, to uh, control fire? Genus. Okay, was it... Was it um, Oh god, answers on a postcard for that one. What was the first species to control fire? Don't know, mine was Prometheus who stopped fire from the gods. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, cool. Um, we'll figure that one out. Right, should we finish off with the. What, what, what's your vintage of choice, guys? 18. 18, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really think that. You know what? Okay, Have no, you tried the 20 lately, James? Uh, no, actually. I, I think you really like it. I like the other guy that's Did you try it yet? Well, we'll give that one a go. We probably won't be able to taste much after this, mate. That's the best. We need so much. When we bought the second one, I was like, no, because I'm, I want to have another drink after this. If I have... is, there, is there a question now, or is there um, the same one? That's the one from before, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh my god. We're not even going to be able to get that out of the glass. Well, we're going to see what smoked meat tastes like now, guys. Okay. So, Oh yeah, we should, I should have left it in there. We should, we should have done a uh, shandy. <coughs> uh, cool, and um, so Christmas plans, boys? Anything? So, I think... What, what are you eating? I don't really want to know about your personal life too much. Um, I'm keeping it fresh. Just about to open up there. I know, but this is not the forum. Bad right? look. Um, we'll see you next time, next time. Call, no, I think... Call Gloria later. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little one. Um, no, I think I said to my missus that I want to spend the time uh, doing some outside activities um, for two hours a day. So that's kind of what I got planned for my No more, days. no less. No more, no less. I want to be on the couch for no more than two hours a day. Going to kind of break up my day. Uh, and I always want to be drunk before five o'clock. Fair enough. 
I think it's nice as it is to have like mm. the same thing you do every year. It's also nice to have a time where you can actually choose to do something different every year. So that's that's really cool. Me, I'm doing um, seeing family and doing food and all that. So okay. it's been classic. classic oh no! So food wise, yeah. I've tried. Oh, yeah, I've tried for the last three years. I've tried to convince my mum to look like real food and food. And food. Yeah, I've tried to convince her to do like a goose or something. Like, all that. Oh, don't, don't, don't every do. year we used to do goose. Don't don't do. Do. I love to eat goose. Like, no, goose is amazing, and then you just have to make sure you stuff it properly. Yeah. Pork, yeah. beef, because yeah. it doesn't really have a lot in it. So that, that, that's, that's what I that's what I found. Or do like a meat on the goose to feed a family of six. Two goose. You're yeah, only child. Geese. Yeah, I had. <laughs> we had a mirror on the other side. <laughs> or do, no, you, I had, do um, you like a bird? Someone from work, Bassie, who came around for the dinner. Yeah, because he didn't have. Do you like a bird? How you said it as if it was a rule. Can't have more than a family of six, and now you're saying one guy came around in one year. Not my parents. That's two. You and Bassie, there's I'm, four. I'm a partner. Once. And my partner at the time. Your partner says five. Yeah, so okay, so, and. Alright, Jesus Christ. Maybe this is what. <laughs> hi, ma- hi. If you want to get involved, guys, uh, tell us what you're eating for Christmas and what you're drinking tonight. That's, that's, yeah. that'd be good. Maybe that's where the bird inside a bird thing comes. Oh, have you seen the videos yeah, yeah. on uh, YouTube? No, that was cool. You've seen the pig one where they start with a pig and they stuff it with something else and then they end up with a chicken in the bottom. No, because I've heard of the seduction. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a turkey stuffed with a chicken, uh, stuffed with a duck stuffed stuff with a chicken. Yeah, so that's a duck and well. Yeah. But then you wrap that up with a stuffed pig, I think. <laughs> just sounds horrific. Viva America. Um, yeah. I feel like I can just do. I can just snack on my peas and blankets the whole day. And yeah. Watch and that, that I tried making fun. some sausage rolls from scratch the day. I've never made my face before. Not worth it. So my, my Christmas meal growing up was turkey, uh, turkey, goose. No, I hate turkey. Sorry. It was always good. We used to breed our own geese. Yeah. Have you ever had like ever seen geese are an amazing, an amazing animal. They're flock. They're like herd animals. Aren't they, they they really are. So we used to have one gander, mad goose and gander. Um, and like he was the only one that survived. And every time that like we would cull down, it would always be like you'd get really sad. But um, cause we used to live on this farm. And <laughs> quite how, did, how did you cheer him up? I just gave him more female geese. <laughs> okay. Let's not get into that because most of them eat his daughters and his Oh um, god. Um, but yeah, so when the new ones were still alone, they used to always go down to the road at the bottom. They always try to get out of where they were, and you used to be able to just whistle to him, and he'd be up on like the dam. And he would see that the other geese going down near the road. He would run down and like circle them up, and then move them back up to the dam. And then every night at the end of the night, when they actually put him inside, so he get hit by foxes. You just have to whistle, and he would go collect everybody yeah. and, and take them back into the into the pen. Um, yeah, so we had that with roast pork. Um, my sister makes the best cauliflower and uh, bake. So it's like cauliflower, cheese sauce, bread crumbs over the top, and then. Of course, all these normal roast sides. Mm-hmm. I hate when that plant comes. Oh, oh man, it, it, it is underrated. Yeah. That's, one of the things, that's one of the things I've discovered this year, is the power of cauliflower. Cauliflower and cheese? Yeah. Like, not yeah. a great thing, but like, my mum. Any peep show fans? Cauliflower is a much So, the worst, one of the worst meals I've ever had in my life involved cauliflower. So, like, <laughs> live with a guy, Fred Marshall, if you're watching. <laughs> um, He's probably one of those 10,000 people. Um, I, I was really poor. I was a apprentice plumber at the time. Um, he was a musician. He lived the life, didn't he? Yeah, and uh, I was like seventeen, living in, living in this share house, and uh, I had no money really for food. And Brett's like, "Oh, I'm making dinner. Do you want some dinner?" I'm like, "Great." So he's like, "I'm making cauliflower su- uh, cauliflower and cheese soup." All right, right. We'll yeah, cool. Fine. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Great." Looked at it and looked like water. It tasted like water and salt. I think he used like maybe three little sprigs of cauliflower on the top. I mean, and if you're cutting back on cauliflower, <laughs> that's when you're like, ooh. Yeah, how much cauliflower is He's really cauliflower. struggling. But we never, we always had beer in the fridge. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, it, it was it was the worst thing. Like, it was like half a handful of like frozen cheddar cheese already uh, shredded. Uh, yeah. And then I had to sit there and eat it. Mine was always go, porridge and water. That was when you got fat. Oh, I see. I always cook my porridge with water and then add milk afterwards. Oh, no, I know, full milk. So it's just porridge and water. Mm-hmm. That's when you're like, oh, yeah, we should cut down. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, what's, what's your family growing up? Uh, Turkey. Turkey. I mean, my parents aren't going to watch this, so I can 
Lie about it. Lie about it. Yeah. Um, uh, no. Caviar and toast <laughs> points. <laughs> we used to have lobster races in the garden. <laughs> um, they just used to cover their feet in lobsters and try to run. Yeah. Um, no, my parents aren't really cooked, so they always just get a pre-prepared ready meal from M&M and whack it in the oven. Bang it. And it depresses me every year. And I die a little bit inside. Oh, I was so lucky I had that time yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just lucky I had, like, my, my dad's quite a good cook. Um, so he, and so is my sister. My mum's a good cook as well, but that's better. Sorry, mum. Mum's actually watching. Yeah, no, Greg is actually watching. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was lucky enough to have, like, yeah. such a, 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 an array of food. No, it's weird because growing up, like my parents were always like both of them, both of them worked like full time. So the food was just one of those things you did to eat rather than to enjoy. I think it's only recently that they retired. They just been like, oh, actually, we can put the time to do it. Um, so it's one of those labors of love, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so this year, I think we're having turkey, but we can get whole turkey. So we're having a turkey breast and legs. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm petitioning so that we should roll the legs. I mean, if I keep on and roll them, and do something a little bit different. Otherwise, you're just going to have some legs and some crap. Mm-hmm. 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 That is what box me yeah, goes Christmas. Through. Although, having said that, that is my memory growing up. It's cold meat and mash on Boxing Day. My parents love cold turkey, enough mash that you could probably kill a small person. I took that second bum 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 spoon for the mash for the back Christmas. Boxing day, I think leftovers is good. I don't think a good roast dinner sandwich yeah. afterwards. Oh, yeah. Sprouts. Or my mum used to make uh, pies afterwards. Oh, yeah. So I'll grab all the stuff and oh, yeah. together. Yeah, but we didn't know. We didn't know what to do. Oh, pie. So good to live, mate. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, this year, I think, because mine is from Polish, so they do Christmas on New Year's Day. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Just change it right up. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll do, we kind of, I've always wanted to do two Christmas meals, I love food, so yeah, the Christmas stuff is like pierogi, and then I uh, did a couple of years ago with these like uh, mushroom and, and cabbage like rolls, and then you, oh, you, nice. fry, you do yeah. pancakes, and then fill in the center with uh, yeah. mushroom, yeah. onion, and, and cabbage, and then you fry them, <coughs> croquettes, they just like croquettes, um, and then lots of other stuff, they also do like lid soups, and it's quite like a, there's a lot of traditional dishes, and when I grew up, we just sort of had like what we had. But it's actually quite a, you know, everybody shares in the same sort of thing. I really yeah, like cool. that. That's cool. So I try to do it one year, and I try to make my own everything, and like I try to prepare it. So I was working at the time, and I was making pierogi, which is kind of like uh, like dumplings. Yeah. And I was like trying to figure. We only had a little kitchen, so I was like, oh, I'll put them in these containers. I put them in the fridge, and they all stuck together. And then I got them out, and it's just like this goopy ball of just like filling and. <laughs> Pastry, and I was so upset. I spent hours making these things and just completely screwed up. Christmas tipples. <coughs> Christmas tipples. I, I would be back on the pork flip this year, I think. Oh, yeah. Classic. Pork's the way to go. Egg, egg and pork. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I'm never so going to make pork it. Pork flip's got like, shots of pork in it. No, no. It's oh, just, shit. It's just where you shake um, an egg with some pork. So yeah, I always yeah, do mulled pork, your, which I love. Okay. What's that? I'm just going to be back in a minute because I forgot a present. Um, Why is that? Okay. What does that mean? So um, it's like a really old school cocktail from like 1700s, but they oh, just okay. they just put egg in stuff. So you literally just put an egg, a whole egg, with a shot of port in a uh, cocktail shaker, shake it up, it goes really frothy, and just get on it. I thought it was amazing. Well, Which, you open all? You open all, 100%. Um, the only problem is if you have four or five of them by lunch, you have four or five eggs, so you're a bit like full, yeah, yeah. full of. Um, the pork. Um, so yeah, actually I'm around Alan's this year, so I think I'm going to use bathe myself a little bit. Um, have you got like a few days lined up between Christmas and New Year's where you're doing Christmas stuff? Mm-hmm. Or is it like one day? I think mainly Christmas Day. I think we're going to my parents on Christmas Eve and then um, yeah, Christmas Day with them. And then, yeah, a bit of, bit of a gap between Christmas and New Year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot what we were going to end on. Oh, this is it. Don't, don't, don't worry, guys. Now. This is this is gonna end. <laughs> yeah, I mean for you, not get, for us. Getting to all So um, I found this in the back of my cupboard yesterday when I was trying to find something that was weird and wonderful. So this is a gift from my girlfriend's uncle, I believe. 
there's like 15 to send now. Me. It's me. Mate, well, his own bees, but like this is. How do I spoon bees? Yeah, yeah. So, it, so what what they do is they take one bee and they just <laughs> electrify it. <laughs> so it's just like slowly just nerve moving and <laughs> milk a bee. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry guys. It's, uh, I did. We did warn you it was gonna get legal, but um. um so right, yeah. So that's for Robbie. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Well, guys, yeah, have a. Oh, that's delicious. It's so sweet. It's sweet in a weird way. It's very it's like, acidic. It's like uh, wild forage berries. Oh, fifteen percent. You know what? That's delicious. That was delicious. So it's nice, and it's like old, as, old as hell in an old Polish vodka bottle. Oh God, that's really good. Right, guys, we'll leave you there. Thanks very much. Thanks for a great year. Um, and we will see you again next year. I think next week can be a bonus episode where we're going to sling together. But uh, yeah, take care. Yeah. Thanks for the bye. Thanks for being there every day. Cheers, guys.